Move over to this story which relates to domestic workers heading to the Concord tomorrow and this is with regards to the compensation for occupational injuries and diseases. We know that um, the High Court last year confirmed that um, that section of the law that excludes uh, domestic workers is unconstitutional and tomorrow they will be heading to the Constitutional Court to find a constitutional validation about this um, inconsistency that has been found in the, um, in the Compensation for Occupational Injuries and Disease Act of 130 of 1993. I'm now joined by Pinky Mashiani, who is the, the president, you said, the president of um, Domestic Workers in South Africa Union. Good evening and welcome to The Full View. Good evening and thank you for inviting me. Let's start off here. What was the argument that was presented by the Labour uh, Department around um, the issue around um, compensation for, um, for workers, especially domestic, domestic workers, being excluded from the compensation fund? Um, when we went to High Court, the Department of Labour didn't oppose us. Actually, they agreed with us that COIDA is unconstitutional for not including domestic workers. They put different reasons, saying that uh, domestic workers are scattered, they are working in different places, they have to find a way how to make this work for domestic workers. That's what was delaying the Department of Labor. Mm -hmm. But they didn't argue about uh, the validity of uh, compensation fund for domestic workers. Yeah. So the biggest argument that they're putting forward is uh, whether, it should be, whether it should apply retrospectively, because in this particular case um, that you're bringing to the court as well, is that, this, um, that the lady died uh, while working at home, while working rather, and uh, fell into the pool, she then she drowned. But her child is arguing that she should be compensated, even though um, this incident took many, took place many years ago. They didn't argue about, uh, about the retrospective. Actually, they agreed to compensate retrospective unlimited on the uh, 23rd of uh, October. It was on the 27th of October at the High Court. After the High Court, we received the message from our lawyer that the minister has agreed to compensate retrospective unlimited. But I see that in the argument that's put forward in, in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the response from the Constitutional Court, the Constitutional Court actually indicates that the department said, um, the respondents in this case, which of course is the department said, further to this, they do not oppose the relief sought by the applicants. They do, however, put up two justifications for the limitations of retrospective effect and of the declaration of invalidity. The respondents submit that such an order will result in administrative burdens since claims arising from old injuries or diseases retrospectively will have financial implications for the fund in its entirety. On the 23rd, the Department of Labor actually wanted to, to compensate from, three years, from 2019 to three years back. And we refused because that was not even including Maria Machango. We said, no, we want the domestic workers who were injured on duty since 1994. That's what we are saying even today, because this was not about Maria Mas only mm -hmm. Maria Machango. So, so they only agreed to pay to compensate Maria's family? No, they haven't said that they will only compensate Maria's family. They just agreed that they will con uh, compensate retrospective and limited. So mm -hmm. we are going to find out tomorrow what's the way forward after tomorrow. Okay, so the argument also then is uh, the issue that they're raising is that, for instance, that the fund will get depleted. Do you agree to that? I don't think uh, it's true because I think government, they do have funds that they are keeping for other workers, or for workers who are injured on duty. And while there are no accidents at all. So it's not that they don't have anything, they don't have any funds in the in compensation fund. They do have funds and they'll have to find a way to compensate domestic workers mm -hmm. who will come and claim from those funds that they have. Since the High Court ruling last year, have you received any further applications from um, members or people who may have worked as domestic workers who argue that um, they were injured on duty many years before? Yes, we, we did have uh, calls and people who came to our meetings saying that they were injured on duty, others were beaten by dogs. We have them, but we haven't started with the application because we're waiting for the Constitutional Court tomorrow to confirm the declaration by the High Court and hear what, what's the way forward from there. Mm. What's your message to people who are domestic workers and those who were injured before, before this new law come in, came into place? What I'll say to the domestic workers is that they must keep any evidence that they have uh, whether the doctor's letters and anything that they have to prove that they were injured on duty, they were not injured on the street. And those claims must be uh, 
uh, legitimate. They mustn't come with uh, false claims when this time comes. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm saying, I'm also saying to them that if they get injured or they are bitten by dogs, they must take records of that and they must also take pictures of their injuries and go to their doctors. Not if the employers are taking them to their, their employers, their doctors, the mm -hmm. employers, they must also go to their own doctors. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the employers, uh, uh, doctors are telling the domestic workers what the employers want to hear. Mm -hmm. And what should the employers be doing? The, empl uh, the employers, uh, what we want is the employer to come and sit with us. We are trying even to say to get the, the employers' organization so that we can sit down and talk together. We're also saying to the, to the Department of Labor, it must call the employers and call us as the unions so that we can sit and discuss this, how we're going to work with this, because we need each other. Okay, thank you so much. That is uh, Pinky Mashiani, who is the president of the United Domestic Workers of South Africa.